What you doing? Making stuff. What are you doing? I was just walking around the shop, getting some footage. Welcome oh, talk, what are these? Talk to me about this thing. Um, this is my latest tinkering project. You do like to tinker. Yeah. Well, when I've got some time, I like to make stuff because that's kind of what I really always enjoyed about the wood shop. So this guy, I always wanted to make a, a life counter or HP tracker. Um, I wanted to make something like chunky and I thought about it for a while and it never really worked. And I wanted something like, you know those old clocks that had the flip numbers on them? Like something yeah, like yeah. that, but like Wheel of Fortune. Oh, the old school like analog stuff? That just... Yeah, yeah. I, was, I thought about like, my grandfather had all this like, like over-engineered wooden hardware in his house. You know, like the big chunky bread boxes and like the clocks and all that. And I always wanted to do something that was like a chunky table piece you could keep, you know, track your life. Cause I like to fidget when I'm waiting for my turn. I'll sit there and like stack my dice up and like OCD line everything up perfectly and goof around with these. So, so you um, see this more as, as a, a tool for RPG players and uh, not I, magic. I, I, I'm, I, we're not really big in the magic crowd, right? Well, I don't think that's our audience, but I, and I don't play magic, so I don't know a lot about it. Yeah. Um, and I had iterated through. I do. <laughs> I had iterated through a number of designs um, and wanted to go zero to nine nine nine, but those kind of were more complex, so we ended up zero to ninety nine, which I think works for in, in most circumstance. And if um, you go over a hundred, you could. You just remember that you're over 100, right? If you're at 147 or something. Well, yeah, it's like a free added feature that you get for free. <laughs> nice. you remember, yeah, you remember in your it. mind, it's <laughs> delivered for free immediately. <laughs> so yeah, I was thinking about that, and I did like a three-tier design with them like stacked. Yeah, I remember that one. Um, it was a little, kind of, it was a little clunkier and didn't yeah, work quite as well. Yeah, and as I got like whittled them smaller and smaller, I really liked this one that could fit in your hand. It reminds me of like the fidget spinner craze. Right. So it was kind of like. I like the the like the texture of it. I see that one. Yeah, that's Benge. It's really simple. I'm putting one apart here. Sure. So you yeah. want to get a close up. So basically, like selling corporate secrets here or anything, are we? Yeah, right. Well, you can take it apart if you get one. So. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, that's not glued together. It's it's just locked no. in with screws. Oh, it's simple. So basically, we've got these specialty screws. These these two pieces come off the CNC. Um, I clean them up a bit, get them sprayed. And basically, all it is is these two screws. We pop a magnet in the back, so you know it'll stick on. And then that was an afterthought too. You know, we were just doing it, and I was playing with it. And I'm like, it'd be really cool if this like stuck to the back of your screen. Right. So you got two or three guys that you're tracking, or for a regular player, like the magnet can stick into your player pad or something like that. Yeah. Or you can just jam the thing in your pocket, or like stand it up and look at it. Oh, that's cool. It looks like a robot face. <laughs> um, anyway, so stuck a magnet in the back, and basically we've got these dials that fit in and friction fit on these posts like so and the face covers it like that and you can see the numbers and then these little finishy screws sit in there and i just tighten these by hand and basically the thing is engineered to be easy to put together mm -hmm. um, and fit nicely in your hand it's nice to have the time to sit with a design and an idea um, because that kind of translates into, all right, I'm gonna go and do this and make them and I'm gonna make them in a way, this is a small enough product that I can I can make them at a, like a really aggressive price point. If, mm -hmm. I, if I really streamline that process and get it down, then we can sell these for 25, 30 bucks, something like that. So, right. so people will have an interest in them because I don't wanna, doesn't, this doesn't feel like a $50 thing to me. No, it's not. It feels like, yeah. like but, you know, 25 bucks is pretty cool. Um, so as I was doing it, I kind of kept that the streamlining in mind, like like not lean, but in terms of like production management. Right. And so every step of the process, mm -hmm. I was refining this as we went. So I wanted to get like hardware and get specific hardware and then change the design around the hardware. Right. So I know we can get this exact hardware every time. Yeah. We talk about that a lot, right? Yeah. We, what happens if we have to make a thousand of them? Yeah, that's exactly it. And so for this one, I, this the whole design I was going okay how do I make a thousand of these mm -hmm. if I'm doing this and all the, the sanding and the finishing and the machining and I kept that in mind during all of it and timed it all out <clears throat> and did like, like the first first set I did a half dozen and they sold right away mm -hmm. so I was like oh this is cool people people like these so I'm doing some more and then I'll do a batch of 10 and kind of time every every aspect process of it, right? and aspect of it yeah 
um, in a batch of 10 and get a really good idea of how quick we can put them through. We haven't done that always, have we? Not always, <laughs> no, not always. There are other factors. You know, sometimes you're too excited and you wanna like get this thing out or you don't have time to, to spend six months on it or it's really, really complex and you miss those. We're, um, we're excitable too, right? Like We do tend to be excitable. <laughs> we just wanna, hey, look at this go, amazing go, thing. Make more, make yeah. more. Really cool part about these is a lot of this wood we can't use because it's so small. So right. it's really, we're, we're kind of upcycling a lot of wood that would get thrown away. That's that we, we aren't able to, we don't have a product small enough to use that dimensional number. So that's all in AJ's good bin, right? Yeah. Like he's got a yeah, select been, exotic bin. He's been, I raided his bin yesterday and I'm like, well, Was I'm he, gonna, pissed? Uh, he didn't have any choice because I'm a boss. <laughs> I guess do what I say. Uh, but I raided his bin and it's full of like Chichen and Rosewood and Bacote and like really nice figured walnut and all these like red heart and leopard wood and all these really great high end pieces that are super expensive, but they're just sitting there. Um, so yeah, it's been really cool. So I raided his bin and I, I think I've got, I've got like, a, like 150 pieces that I chopped down wow. that are, are ready to go. And this was stuff we couldn't use. So I'm like, cool, we can move these, can basically dial it in so tightly in every aspect that we can, you know, sell them for like a really reasonable price, which is super cool because yeah. our stuff tends to be really complex and labor intensive and our stuff is expensive. It just is by nature. Um, so I like this guy. It's a cool little. Yeah, let me see that one. Yeah. Oh, what kind of wood is that? That's Picote. Very nice. And part of that, that process is I will, when I made that first six, I made a couple prototypes and I'll take them and carry it around with me. I'll put it in my pocket carry around, you know, we go to lunch and I'm like sitting there fidgeting with this thing. Right. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's really cool. It'd be like a facial massage. <laughs> like if you got three of them, you could like till potatoes or like massage your face. <laughs> but yeah, they're fun. Cool little thing. Cool. They spin nicely. I think, I think they're neat. You know, we sold almost every one that we put up so far. That's crazy. So I'm like, cool, let's do a hundred. Yeah. See what happens. See what happens. Um, so check them out. We'll drop drop them. I've got another batch of. There's fifteen or twenty in Sprang right now, so I'll probably have another batch later today or maybe tomorrow. Right. Um, Some of that I saw was spalted tamarind that was stained. Actually. Yeah. You've yeah. never done that before. No, tamarind's really cool. So these smaller pieces, it's less risky, right? So we take like a piece of. I don't have a piece of tamarind here, but dye the tamarind and the natural occlusions and differentiation in the colors of the tamarind changes the dye color. It's like, it's really, really cool. Killer. It is it's super yeah. cool. So there's a couple of those coming. I'll get some footage um, of that and we can put it on here. Yeah, they're probably over there. Yeah. You should pop over there now and get some footage of that, that spray booth. Okay. All right, bye. Play a new character every session. Don't give a reason for the change or explain what happened to the last one. In fact, don't even mention the change to other players or the DM. Imagine the fun when someone asks for the cleric to heal them and you say, Cleric? Sorry, I'm a goblin sorcerer tonight. <laughs>